OK, good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to this next session uh, as part of the Pontoon Virtual Symposium. Um, we I'll just say a couple of words about the structure. I mean, I've seen some familiar names and faces here, so if you've, you, you'll know how this works if you've been to any of the previous talks. But for those of you who are kind of new to this, um, the idea is that our speaker, Simone Gumtau, who I'll introduce in a moment, will speak for a little bit um, and do her, her presentation. Then there'll be an opportunity for questions. You can either put the questions in the chat box and you can put them in as early as you like and we'll come to them when the when the time at the, at the time or you can um at the end come in and speak your questions if you'd prefer to do that so um let me just introduce simone she's a visual communication designer specializing in interactive media design an academic lecturer and researcher she started her career as a screen and web designer in the german media capital of hamburg during the dot-com boom she left a position at the online department of prestigious news magazine Der Spiegel to start her studies in the UK. While studying for a BA Honours in Communication Design, she carried on commercial engagements by working freelance in various areas and for local design departments. After completing her MA specialising in digital and interactive media, she started working as a researcher on the project Mediate and subsequently began a PhD programme researching touch-based human-computer interfaces. Um, several research and teaching appointments finally culminated in Simone's current position as Senior Lecturer in Digital Media at the University of Portsmouth. So I will hand over to you, Simone. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Tom. And uh, yeah, thanks for inviting me. Thanks for coming here. Actually, the uh, I'm, I'm no longer really a Senior Lecturer in Digital Media, but it's one of the things I do. I also do visual culture and I've sort of started doing data visualization, although I am, I would still call myself um, an interface designer. So it is about interfacing um, with data. Um, so yeah, obviously my topic is, is data today and it might be a little bit of a roller coaster ride. Um, and so I just want to encourage people if, um, I'm gonna introduce quite a few bits of technology and if the technology isn't working for you or it's holding you back, then just use a pen and paper. So if you have a pen and paper near you somewhere, um, that's all you're gonna need really. So let's see, I'm going to just um, give you a little bit of an intro as to where I'm coming from. Okay, so I, I have uh, kind of tailored the workshop today to really look at the relationship between data and feminism. And the point um, I'll kind of make around that is uh, that data is really one of the most important materials that we have available in society at the moment. I'm sure it hasn't you know, passed, passed you by that basically in all areas of life, we tend to look towards data now and, and it's been dubbed as a new oil in some way um, because it's so valuable and it's considered you know, the, a, a kind of desirable um, piece of capital in some way, a piece of uh, a, a resource. This kind of fits with you know, the sort of enlightenment ideals and the scientific paradigms that we, we sit within at the moment that we, we look to objective evidence in order to help us find out something, like prove a hypothesis or um, find some evidence about something or help us maybe answer some questions. And so now it's sort of traversed into all sorts of areas such as politics and health and business. Um, at the university, we, we use it for, so, you know, fill out questionnaires and all these kind of things because we are hoping that it will give us some way of maybe perf uh, improving performance, make better decisions, uh, plan our resources, inform policy and so on. You might say, you know, it's a, it's a way of trying to cope with a really complex world. So, so the more complex the world and the decisions are getting, the more kind of data we want to maybe help us make some decisions. There is also a kind of air of believability about data visualization at the moment still. So it has almost the same effect as maybe a photograph a hundred years ago that, you know, we kind of look at data visualization now and we kind of think, oh, you know, that must be true. Even though, you know, the more we look at it, probably there is a lot of questions we could ask about data um, visualizations that we do see. So the sort of challenges that are coming towards the idea of data collection and data visualization now are often 
from a kind of feminist point of view. And one of the most kind of well-known key kind of critics at the moment is Caroline Criado Perez. You might have heard about her book where she's looking at the gender data gap um, in visible women. And she found that when she was sort of looking around that when there is data collection going on, that very um, often women aren't being considered. So whether that is um, in the design of PPE masks, for example, um, that don't be fit women, um, smartphones are often designed for male hands, um, car cat crash tests are done with, with uh, male shaped bodies. Um, in sort of medical research, often women aren't considered and, and that results in, in women having more side effects and so on. Um, so that's about data collection. Um, then there's the uh, Sophia Noble book, Algorithms of Oppression. This is where she was looking at how the platforms that deal with data and that present data back to us, such as search engines, tend to reproduce the sort of structural inequalities and um, societal bias or unconscious biases that, um, that we tend to harbor and that you know, people are working really hard at the moment to challenge. For example, in the Black Lives um, Matter movement, you know, where people are trying to um, address structural racism. Um, and this is also about you know, um, structural gender inequalities, which often is due to the fact that a lot of technologies are developed in places like Silicon Valley, you know, which are sort of male dominated white spaces. Um, and they don't, they, they, they just don't really have any women to consider or to calibrate the technology on. And, you know, very often it's not a malicious thing. It's just that it's not being considered. So she um, basically found out that um, when you put the search terms, black girls into Google, uh, it, um, and look for images, you know, it tends to come up with quite demeaning stereotypical representations um, and, and pornographic representation of black girls, which was very different to uh, when, when you put in the terms white girls. And then um, oops, you can see here in this advert, uh, put you away there. Um, for the UN uh, women campaign, you know, these kind of things where you basically, yeah, you go into Google and, and, and the autocomplete um, shows you, you know, that, that the technology is just, it's, it's, it is biased. And it's a bit of kind of rethink, you know, because we always thought that the technology and science was gonna solve it all because it's kind of designed, you know, to be neutral and objective. Um, and now we're kind of finding out that actually, no, you know, if we're not careful about how we're um, producing the technology and developing that, then not only are we carrying on with these unconscious biases, but we're actually exacerbating them. So you can see here in this campaign, you know, the, the sort of search box put over the mouth to maybe represent that women weren't asked about this. And then these kind of autocomplete phrases, you know, women need to be put in their place and uh, women need to be controlled and so on. Get the mess, you get the idea. Um, and another sort of uh, challenge or, or critic of um, this field is Catherine D'Inaxio, who kind of suggests a way forward perhaps um, to address the way that we might be uh, approaching it in a new unilateral way. So she kind of calls it a feminist state of visualization that she suggests, but what it really means is that you consider all of the groups. So it's, it's not just about women. It's about basically considering everybody that isn't privileged white males or, you know, the sort of classic um, elite groups, basically. So one of the things we, we might do is, is to rethink binaries and that we can think about the example where, you know, in a questionnaire, you have to say whether you're male and female, obviously, you know, now you, you might want to consider other options, but it goes further than that. So anything where we might have to delineate our identity, um, even race, you know, it's, it's a sort of contested uh, concept, really. So, you know, what race do you belong to and what does race even mean and who defines it, you know, so, so those kind of binaries might be might be rethought and we might be thinking about, you know, embracing pluralism. This then leads us also to examine power 
um, and who has that power? You know, who's, co who's collecting data, who's got access to data, who manages data. And at this point, you know, this is still really opaque and it doesn't, it's, it's a lot of open data around, um, openly available data. And there's lots of networks and organizations kind of making sure that it stays open. Um, but there's, 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 there's lots of issues with that. Just because the data is there, doesn't mean that we can use it. Um, because you need education, you need technology, you need to kind of have skills in order to actually do something with that data. And, um, you know, I, I invite you now to just kind of go to your local council website or something, you know, and, um, and this is something that <laughs> Tom and I have done where we try to uh, do some power mapping and, um, you know, try to decipher the, the, the data that is there for you or that you should be making decisions on. And it's really, um, it, it's nice, it's there, you know, people are kind of following the rules, but it's really not usable. Um, yeah, considering context, I think this also becomes important that we always know kind of who collected the data, where it was collected, um, in what sort of um, circumstances and so on. Um, and this idea of considering effect, I think, is, is also an important one to perhaps counteract this idea that it's all, it's, it's a rational way of capturing the world, um, you know, because it kind of leaves out and, and, and it very much positions itself in, in a certain kind of ideology, which is that, that idea of, you know, empirical, um, empirical data, basically make labor visible i think that's yeah important as well and um this is why you know it kind of leads me to this argument that i said in my abstract which is i now believe that everybody needs to be empowered to deal with data and everybody needs data literacy to a degree um because if we don't get involved with the questions around what we can do with data and and who's doing it and and um what comes out of it um, then it's it's in the it's in the hands of of powerful people who might not be considering us. So, I just wanted to um, show you an example here, um, which I think is really nice because it's it's, it's doing a lot of things. Um, it's a lot of fun, and it's just also really accessible. So, when we talk about data literacy, I think it's a nice place to start. Uh, so th these two people, Georgia Lupi and Stephanie Posovic, they basically created this project where they're sending postcards to each other um, in the Dear Data project for, for about a year. Um, and they each decided on a theme each week, and then uh, they made a data visualization here on the left, you can see, and then on the, uh, on the right, um, they wrote the key about how to read it. So this was about a week of complaints, um, and then how to read it. So we've got here a selection of, you know, she's, she complained about the weather, her husband, I don't know what's going on with my cursor here. Um, her, uh, myself, technology and so on. And then whether these were private complaints, outward complaints, complaints to me, um, how many complaints and all that kind of stuff. But it's literally just done, you know, with a pen and paper and just bothering, I guess, to kind of make these notes about yourself. And this is where I think it's so accessible because it's really just about, okay, this is what I'm going to collect data on. It's my data. It's my personal data. And this is how I'm going to try and communicate it. Of course, that how I'm going to try and communicate it, that's where, you know, um, we do need to kind of practice how that works. And then this is the other um, person basically working on complaints and uh, she noted her musical complaints and so for example I quite like this one here about the boyfriend he's snoring I thought that was quite an interesting definition of a musical complaint um, so each note is a single complaint complaint I said and she even notes the missed complaints you know thoughts of complaining but didn't do and I just really like this project also because it's just so human and it, uh, you know, it kind of, it's, it's, it, it does collect this kind of affective um, dimension of data and saying, well, all of these human things that maybe get lost when you fill out a questionnaire, you know, they are also relevant because that's, that's about you as a sort of um, pluralistic society that is about you as a feeling being, you know, that's you as a sort of uh, person with relationships who, feels different every day and, and so on. Okay, so 
yeah, a week of laughter. And here again, we can see, you know, it's quite, because they, this is what they do, they're, they're information designers. So, you know, they develop these quite complex systems, um, but still, you know, kind of done in a, in a quite um, quick and accessible way, I suppose. So this is about laughter, it's laughter from, uh, you know, she generated, laughter she hears and, you know, how, how loud they were and so on. And then uh, this was about books they had on their shelves. And again, they're sort of categorizing all the different genres and um, where they got them from and um, all these kind of things. So I think the other thing I guess to say about this project is that it's almost like a mindful thing, you know, so um, it it's recording maybe little things that you normally wouldn't notice and you have to kind of be quite aware, especially I thought this this bit where, you know, she noted when she felt like complaining, but she didn't. Um, so it's uh, it becomes quite a mindful exercise. So it could be, you know, even quite a therapeutic to, thing to do for some people. Right, so, and with that, <laughs> I just wanted to um, send you on, on a mindful walk. So, so walk mindfully. And um, this means walk with an awareness of your walk, but also of course, be careful not to, you know, fall down the stairs or whatever, but I'm sure it'll be fine in your own flat or house or whatever. So um, I thought what we could do, and we'll take five minutes to do this, um, and I'm not sure, you know, some people might have been at the computer all day. So um, if you can walk to the kettle and back and count your steps. So this will generate the data that you'll be using. So you have to make a note of how many steps. If you get to the kettle and make a cup of tea, which you could do, I suppose, in five minutes, uh, just keep stepping and counting while the kettle boils. If you are crazy or not English and you don't drink tea and you don't have a kettle or whatever, you could also walk to the window uh, with your favorite view. And here in England, it's really quite nice and sunny today. So you could just like go to the window and look outside um, and come back and count your steps. And when you are back, uh, you'll be put into groups, little breakout rooms to discuss and visualize your data. And the kind of questions that I'd like you to ask of your data then is, how many steps did you take and you compare it in the group? What would you like to say about this data? What data other than the steps do you have available? Which data matters to your story? Any observations, comments that are not in the data? Um, and then um, can you add any of that data that isn't in it? So with that in mind, <laughs> hopefully I'm not gonna lose you all. Um, so it's, got, it's a bit experimental. So if we could be back here, um, actually. Have I talked for 18 minutes? Okay, um, if we can be back here, uh, actually, let's say I just give you three minutes, so you can't have a cup of tea, but you can have a little walk. So if we can, <laughs> in, in three minutes, so if we can be back here at 13, 37, or whatever the time is in your country. Okay, I'm going to share my screen again. And I just want to show you these, uh, um, these boards and I'm going to post a link to this in a minute. It's a collaborative board. Um, and we, we might work on this all together actually. Let's um, see. Um, and like I say, if you, if you don't want to use this, you can just use pen and paper. Because now the, the, the idea is, yeah, we come together, we talk about the, 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 the steps that you have and, um, and the numbers that you have, and then we kind of think about, okay, how, how do we want to represent this? Um, you know, do we want to represent, represent this by um, lines or um, circles or squares? You know, how many squares do we need? Or do, do we have sort of every step represented as a square? That's one way of doing it. You could just kind of have a sort of um, bar chart, you know, where every step is represented as a square, or you could use the area size of the square, um, for example, um, to be bigger than the other one. Um, or you could have the length of a line 
and so on. So what I've done here is I've just given you like this ball, which you can um, you can just copy and paste things like this, like you do, you know, with anything really. You can use things here on the left as well, but you can just ignore that. Um, and you can sort of just drag and uh, drop things. And you can also then, you know, change the size. Okay, so if we, um, So once I put you into groups, if you could just quickly introduce your names and nominate a chair, find your group board on the Miro. So group one is board one. And then I think it'll just be like two, two or three groups. So group one, two, and three. And um, select some of the symbols, discuss how you'd like to represent the connections and comparisons. So we'll spend a little bit of time doing that. Okay, so if everybody could get that link, I'll put it in the chat and put that in your browsers, please. Okay, I think we'll just all stay in this group together because it's not many people left now. So um, there's no point kind of putting us in groups. Uh, okay, let's see. Oh, so. Okay, so what could be... I don't actually think this, that there's any breakout rooms. No. Okay, so if I share my screen, we'll just um, use that. So Anybody want to say, you know, what do you think would be a good symbol to represent your steps? You can put it in the chat if you want. A foot? Yeah. I was going to say that there's. Um... It looks like there are little symbols that look like footprints or kind of like a circle with dots around it. That this like, one here. Like someone's made an impact somewhere, you know, maybe something like that. Yeah, so we could have. Yeah, maybe um, also if you could, maybe you could all put your steps into the chat. Sorry, I was going to do this in breakout rooms, but it's it, it the functionality is not there. Um, so I, maybe if you can all put your your figures in there. How many steps? Brilliant! Wow, six. That's not very far to Kettle at all, is it? <laughs> well, it was to the to my window, which is just behind <laughs> yeah, the same yeah. room. <laughs> and it's not not even a very nice view, but it's a you know it's a view anyway. Yes, exactly. Well, I mean, I just it, yeah. So it's it's not really. I mean, we were never going to actually create you know a, a function of data visualization. It's just about the fact that what I think is interesting about that. So if you see here, for example, um, Harriet's taken forty two steps to go somewhere, and Tom has taken six. So 
you know, what we need to figure out then is like, okay, is that because the ke they, they, the kettle's really far away or no, we found out that Tom actually chose to go somewhere else. And I think that's, you know, that would have been the first thing to establish is the personal choice that you made. And I think that's, you know, that's kind of why I put the options in there. So, you know, that you can't actually compare it necessarily because you need to know more about the context. You need to know more about the person's motivation behind it to then understand the data. Um, and then, of course, the other thing to ask the questions would be uh, exactly, you know, is, um, is it, is it, is it uh, you know, what kind of bodies ha have we got in order? Because the kind of the gate, the, the, the steps that people take are really personal, you know, they're often, of course, decided by gender and, 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 and all sorts of things. Um, yeah, and Catherine walked a long time. I think you probably boiled the kettle and stepped <laughs> on stepping. Eighty was there, Tracy as well, brilliant. Yeah, at least we're getting some exercise as well. So that's important, I thought. <laughs> uh, you know, it's not, um, it's not just sitting down. Yeah, Tom, I'm worried you would never escape from that room. That's what I thought as well. I, I thought I'd given you a chance here to get to the ghetto. Um, well, maybe I'm just incredibly lazy, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you just live there, don't you? Yeah, I haven't actually left that room, I, I know. Um, yeah, so 23 there and back. Yeah, okay, so exactly. I think we can see here 65 there and back. So Mark, is that, um, did you go to the kettle and boil it or is that just really far away? Get sideways steps down the stairs. Tracy, do look out that you're not gonna fall over. <laughs> I didn't do risk assessment for this. Um, but yeah, I think so when you look at it now, you know, I think it could be quite interesting to then find out um, what's the what's the minimum and I think six is the minimum, <laughs> then you know, you might look at the maximum of uh, what do we have here 80. Um, and then you know we probably want to work out why it is. Um, you know what's the difference between them? How they got to be the maximum and uh, and the minimum and so on. I mean that would probably be the first thing to do if you if you have a data set. You know, kind of look at um, the uh, the average and the median and so on. And then from that on, you might be able to work out a story. You know about um, why did people? You know how many people went to the kettle, for example? How many people went to the window? Um, do we want to say something about uh, what what we thought while we were going there? So I think Tracy here said something about being on a fuzzy carpet and then hard tiles, you know. So does that then mean that these footsteps, for example, which look a bit fuzzy, um, you know, they could be combined with something like that, um, you know? So you'd say, okay, when I was on the carpet, that was my footsteps on the carpet. Um, and then when I was on the tiles, you know, that this kind of thing happened. And then you can start to kind of tell a story about that again by saying if, if, um, if we're gonna do, right, let's say that Tom walked on the carpet for six steps. I mean, this would be very simplest way of doing that, you know, um, and somebody else. Not going to make 80 squares now, but you start to get the message around how you could start to express that visually. And like I say, I mean, these kind of um, quantities, you know, is, is, is the simplest way of kind of doing that. You basically representing any every data point, every piece of data by one of these symbols. Um, you know, you, you, it, if you get it, make it more abstract, like I say, you could use something like this, um, actually no, so the, the steps to the window were not that many. And there was lots of steps to the kettle, right? So you can then start to represent quantities like that as well through area um, and, uh, and volume and the relationship you know, from one to the other. Um, another thing that you can use that's quite nice is is this idea of proximity. So as you can as you can see here, you know, I've sort of put them all 
together and aligned, that means that you know by just looking at it, it belongs together. If I start putting that over here, you then think, oh, uh, is that from somebody else? Is that, you know, why did you, what did you kind of stop there? And then, you know, so there's a gap. So the fact that they're close together means that we understand that is a, um, is a grouping, is proximity. Um, and, and it belongs together. So that's how we kind of read these, these visual symbols. I'm gonna slick, uh, uh, slippery. <laughs> Did you walk on the carpet with your shoes on? Slippery, yeah, I think we've all got slippers on. It might be interesting to represent the type of footwear. Yeah, exactly. So that could be, yeah, how you maybe develop this into maybe our collaborative data story as you know, this is the pontoon symposium. <laughs> can we can we have a show of hands how many slippers? <laughs> this would be it now. Um, you know, who's wearing slippers? Admit it. Um, and that, that is like pontoon symposium 2020, you know, it's on Zoom, everyone's got slippers on and it took them, you know, this, much, this many uh, steps to, to go to the kettle. Uh, yeah. So I've got no idea how much time I've got left, 15. Can anyone let me know? Um, so otherwise I'll just go uh, to <clears throat> About 10 minutes, if that's right. Minutes. Okay, yeah. brilliant, yeah, perfect. So we'll, we'll um, do the next bit. Um, yeah, so here a, a quote I've just put it there. The objective of visual encoding is to find the right blend of marks and attributes that most effectively will portray the angle of analysis you wish to show the viewer. So that's about finding those symbols and, and those symbols then help you tell that story um, and, and how you see it connect. But the important thing is that this is where you are making the decisions. You know, you kind of look at your data and, and this is why I wanted you to have your own data because it's, you know, it's it's this the thing that you know best, basically you've created it um, and it's, it's in your hands and it, you know, you've got the power over it. Um, I just wanted to there also very briefly um, look at um, other pieces of data. So I'm just going to does this work? Um, so you can open them in the chat again. And it's just three pieces of data um, um, related to women's career. So um, th this is from the US context um, and it's from an open source um, data world about how many women board members over the years, how many women CEOs, and how many um, women university presidents. So I just thought this was, you know, kind of relevant to what we're talking about today, about sort of women, employability, careers, and so on. And the fact that, you know, in all of these stats, women are still kind of underrepresented. Uh, underrepresented. So again, we're not going to do this now, we're going to do this all here in the room. So I thought for this, it would be nice to, to look at this data set. And like I said, they're quite simple. I just show you the percentage of changing over, over the years. And I thought it would be nice to look at these uh, metaphors here and have a think about, you know, what are the sort of, what is the metaphor that you think you would choose to you um, to to represent what you're seeing in that data. So I'll just give you access to the to Tumblr as well. So I've put a few here, but I show I just show them. If you've got too many screens open now, like I said, this is like tech overflow today. So you know, could we use something like organize the data like a grocery store shelf? Could we use something like a transportation network to represent that? My cat's always joining in. The most inopportune. Could we use it um, like a notice board? Could we use a metaphor of tree rings stacked up trees? Different colored windows. Some of these are quite, some of these more obvious. Uh, this one's more abstract, I think. Knots and joints, pipes, a net. Mm. 
What about using the horizon? Layers. A flock of birds. Mosaic and tiles. Bubbles, foam, droplets. High points of the landscape. The view from above. Patterns in brickwork. Fallen leaves. Leaves changing color. So this is a metaphor uh, kit that um, the guys at Cunningham Mellon developed Imaginaries Lab. Um, and I picked this up last year um, in, a, in, a, in a symposium that I attended with them. And I just wanted to use it. So hopefully, if you can put in the chat anything that you think, oh yeah, I think I can imagine this working with the story that we might tell about pieces of data that relate to women's careers and the fact that uh, there is a lot of work to do in order to encourage women, in order to remove barriers for women, um, in order to upskill women. Um, you know, what is the sort of story we could tell by using these metaphors? Anybody got an idea? And it, there's obviously, I mean, obviously not right or wrong here. <laughs> Um, yeah, horizon is nice, something a bit inspirational change. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, so um, uh, that would be this one. Um, and, I, and I think it would be nice to, yeah, imagine how we can maybe use some of these uh, kind of evocative metaphors for data, you know, because something I guess I'm interested in is, is moving the data visualization on from this kind of scientific method that we understand it as to maybe understanding data in a, in a much more effective way and much more in a way of storytelling um, and you know the way that we sort of relate to it as human beings does often have to involve in the storytelling elements such as metaphors um, whether they're visual or you know whether they're literary um, so yeah I think the horizon is is is, is a good one um, because yeah, there's, there might be change. We're, we're going somewhere here. There's a trajectory, um, and there is a yeah, there is a sort of sense of moving, moving perhaps. If that is, that's the hopeful story. Yeah, that's the optimistic story. Anybody else got any anything that inspired them? I mean, these were just the ones that I found interesting from the pack, but I think, yeah, Horizon. And the other get thing I guess to say uh, is, is this idea that the, um, to, to, I mean, I always use metaphors in my work anyway, but um, you know, the, the, the idea that, yeah, you kind of moving away from Layers, yeah, okay. It's this one. Yeah, I was going to ask about um, sort of further to um, the comment about layers, sort of about you know whether whether you can go into kind of three dimensions and whether you can um, whether you could do almost like physical like mm -hmm. physical models that would be that would be, could be good. Yeah. Interpretations of things. Yeah. I mean, I, I I love that, and and yeah, data objects, or they they're also called data physicalization, or okay. what what I call it, data materialization, is actually a particular aspect of my research, and I'm really really interested in that because yeah, as soon as you sort of add touch, you know, as it's sort of a physical object, again, it kind of makes it more human, you know, it kind of brings it back into the real world, and it and it stops being kind of this weird. Um, thing that nobody understands and it's too abstract and and don't even bother trying to understand that you know because it's only from boffins um, which which I'm kind of trying to um, yeah counteract in some way you know kind of um, asking the fact that actually I'm not really a statistician uh, you know I have to ask questions about data but I think that's the 
that's a really good thing about how artists might approach that, you know, that you are the one asking the questions, um, the, 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 the silly questions sometimes, um, because somebody needs to, you know, because yeah. otherwise it just kind of stays in that realm of, of the people who, who know and, and, you know, you shouldn't concern yourself with that. And that's really, for me, that's a great danger of, of, of this kind of world of data, you know, that, that we are being kept out because we don't have the right language for it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Good. So yeah, landscape to old versus new, breaking the barrier. Yeah, but out there are various uh, maybe shopping bags, the fullness, the sight. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, yeah. Shopping bags that would be yeah a great one. Different plastic ones, hemp <laughs> ones, reusable ones. So um, yeah, I think. Um, uh, hang on, have I got any more? <laughs> Simone, I'm really sorry, but I think we're, we're going to have to um, draw it to a close. I've finished, I've finished, I've finished, I've finished. Yeah. 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 So if, um, what I'd suggest is that, I mean, so first of all, thank you for a fascinating um, uh, presentation. I mean, I think that, you know, it, it speaks to, um, uh, you know, a lot of what we've been doing on Pontoon. And I think, uh, you know, thinking about data in those really kind of lateral and creative ways is really important and feels very kind of contemporary and very, very sort of state of the art. Um, I mean, I think if people do have questions, maybe Simone, if, if it's all right for them to, to kind of email you or contact you, you know. Absolutely, yeah, and I've, I've put my Twitter handles on there um, as well. If people are on, on, on Twitter, then um, you can find me there. But yeah, email me or whatever, that's that's great. Brilliant, okay. Yeah. Well, thank, thanks again yeah. so much for that. Sorry, I didn't get to the question by Harriet, but I'll, I'll try and see you another time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, we, we may be in touch with you for um, for, sort of because we need more visualization and, and imagery like this in the in the KTP report that we're doing. So, yeah, maybe we can. We well, can you've start. got all in the case, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, thank you again, Simone. Thanks to everyone for attending. Um, lots of really good points, lots of really good comments that people made in the chat room. And um, thank you. Soon. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.